The news of Macy's plan to close 100 stores should really have no impact on the business of sports, other than there are fewer places to sell clothing with sports logos. But there is a message that urban planners should understand and pass along to politicians who believe that building a stadium or an arena with plenty of retail and residential space will revitalize an area because many stadiums and arenas have been built with that in mind and somehow the projections by politicians that a stadium or an arena will do just that have been wrong. Chester, Pennsylvania is a prime example. A soccer stadium was built, but nothing else came with it. Sometime in the late 1980s, early 1990s, after the 1986 tax code revision was passed, sports owners figured out that under the right set of circumstances, an owner could keep up to 92 cents out of every dollar generated in a publicly funded stadium or arena. That shift in stadium arena funding led to individual owners demanding a new facility in the existing market or the owner would move to another municipality that would build a sports facility even if other taxes had to be raised. The political excuse was simple. The sports facility would be an economic generator and provide a golden opportunity for reinventing a very small area of a city. With it would come restaurants, bars, and other retail. It didn't quite work out that way, although it was great for owners who witnessed an immediate rise in franchise values. Owners charge more for games. The shift disenfranchised middle and lower class ticket buyers who could no longer afford attending games. Politicians are still trying to sell the stadium village concept, but malls around the country are dying. Macy's was a mall anchor store. The closing of 100 stores cannot be good for the sports arena village concept. I'm Evan Weiner for the politics of sports business.